Hi guys! Oh my gosh, it has been a minute, but we are finally, finally back and it feels so good! So, today I wanted to basically just have a catch up with you guys. Why have I been so quiet? What is going on? And I know a lot of you have been so super sweet sending me emails and messages and Instagram messages saying, uh, are you coming back? Are you okay? And my answer to that is no, I have not been okay. And I think a lot of you can relate. It has been a really, really tough 18 months now for all of us. I know I spoke about some of our troubles last year. I kind of went a bit quiet when Dylan was sick and I didn't really get into depth about Dylan's sickness because I actually couldn't. I couldn't verbalize it and I guess I've learned a lot this past 18 months and now I'm ready to talk about it. Back then my head was firmly in the sand and I was just in survival mode and I was just doing the best I could to help Dylan and the other children cope with all the changes that were going on in our lives. Dylan is actually okay with me talking about this now. He didn't want me to talk about it really last year. Last January, I started noticing that Dylan was changing. Now, I thought it was because maybe he was now, you know, going to be 11. I thought that maybe the change of us moving house, his friends looking at secondary school, but he started to become very um, kind of withdrawn, obsessed with being skinny, his weight, what he ate, um, all that kind of thing. And all these things I was a bit starting to get a little bit worried about because I know a lot of children who are on the spectrum can end up with eating disorders and some other worrying things. So I was always had a heightened awareness about this. And I'm always a bit wary about talking about this because if you're at the beginning of your journey, I don't want you freaking out. This is going to happen when your child's a teenager because it doesn't always happen. Now Dylan is uh, on the autistic spectrum, but he also has OCD anxiety and something called PDA, which is pathological demand avoidance which basically meant that any demands placed on him, he was saying no and quite strongly. So through the anxiety, he was trying to control the situation around him. And by controlling the situation around him was controlling what he ate and drank. I didn't know anything about this really. And I did reach out to the mental health team in this country and quite frankly, they were terrible. There wasn't much help they could offer him. So. This started in January, February last year and his behavior started to get worse, his sleep got worse. And then in probably end of February, beginning of March, he started telling me that he thought I was trying to poison him. So anytime I gave him food, he goes, you're trying to poison me. And he started getting these lumps on his neck. He became very tired, very sick, and he lost a lot of weight very quickly. To cut a long story short, they told us it was leukemia. They sent us home and for five days, I thought my son had leukemia and I was, myself and Andrew were just beside ourselves. I phoned up every person that I knew. Um, luckily, I have a friend who's a doctor and he gave me some advice and said, look, go back and get another blood test done. When the blood test came back and I showed them to my friend again, he said, no, no, you know, the wet blood cell count hasn't gone up anymore. So it's not that, get them to check for glandular fever. Turned out Dylan had glandular fever, which can sometimes mimic the um, early stages of leukemia. He was very sick because he was not eating, he was not drinking, he had glandular fever, and with the pathological demand avoidance, of course, I was getting frantic, going, Dylan, you need to eat, you need to eat. Of course, that was a demand. And he was, no, 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 no. And he literally became delusional because he wasn't eating, wasn't getting the nutrients, and his body was shutting down. For any parent who has seen their child sick and is unable to help them, it was, horrific absolutely horrific and when you're in that moment you just keep going you push yourself you push yourself and just try and get through anyway as soon as I found out it was glandular fever I um, took him out of hospital which they were not happy about and they put social services on me because they thought that I was the one who was stopping feeding him and I wasn't doing enough to help him which is ludicrous. And as soon as they came and saw me, they were like, actually, no, you're doing everything you can. And quite frankly, they don't know anything really to do with a child with autism and eating disorders. And the eating disorder usually comes from some kind of control aspect. So they checked him out for um, anorexia nervosa, which it wasn't that. And once it wasn't that, they didn't know where to send us. So I did what I always do. And I said, 
I'm taking control of the situation, I'm gonna help my son. So I discharged him from hospital and brought him home and learned as much as I could about the pathological demand avoidance and realized that the more demands I put on him, the more he'd move away from me. So I didn't put any demands on him. I basically said to him, my rules are you have to eat three meals a day. Your rules are whenever you want. If you wanna have dinner at midnight, you can have dinner at midnight. If you wanna have breakfast at midnight, have breakfast at midnight. But you, in a 24 hour period, have to have three meals a day. And first he was like, nope, nope, nope. I want this, I want that. But slowly by slowly, I kept bringing in a bit of food to him and I'd bring in his favorite mince and rice and I would just stand there watching him play his games and be like, oh, that's a cool game. And I wouldn't even tell him I had the dinner in my hand. And I would kind of like just waft it under his nose so he could smell it and he'd go, what's that? And I'd be like, oh, it's just some dinner. I just thought I'd have it in my hand, you know? And he'd say, well, can you just leave it there? So I'd let him eat in his room at this point as well, anything to get him to eat. So I put the food in his room. Slowly but surely, his appetite started to come back. He started eating a bit more. He started drinking a bit more in the, the and I, in his mints, I was putting in the probiotics, the vitamins. I also went to a Chinese herbalist who gave me some Chinese medicine to help um, bring down the inflammation in his, in his body. I believe in modern medicine, but I also believe Chinese medicine is amazing as well. So we did all these things and I would massage oils into him and he started to come back and it was amazing. And then we obviously moved down here to Dorset. We went into a rented home, which was also very tough because I had to pack up, leave my life in Brighton, leave my friends, leave my support. And of course, all of this was in the middle of a worldwide lockdown. So I had no support, no family, no friends. And you guys, I'm sure you know what it's like. We were on our own with our children. They weren't getting speech therapy, occupational therapy. None of us got any help. And it was tough for everyone. But anyone who has a child with a special needs or anyone who's a carer, it was hard. There was nowhere for us to go and it was 24 seven. So that was really intense. And then obviously moved down here, found schools for the kids. School didn't go great, didn't go great for Dylan. So I had to move his school twice. Um, obviously making friends, finding doctors, finding dentists, you know, uprooting everything. I got to earlier this year and Dylan started to a lot better. He's come on such a long way. He is now writing a book called It's All In Your Head because he believes that his head tricked him into believing that the food I was giving him was poison. Um, his brain tricked him into wanting to be super skinny. And that's how far he's come in a year. So no matter where you are right now, no matter how bad it is, please trust me when I say it's going to get better. But it's a journey to get there. And as soon as Dylan was doing so much better and my kids were doing better and we moved into the house, it was almost like I could stop fighting. And as soon as I stopped fighting, I just collapsed. I just didn't really know who I was. I felt like I got a bit lost. I don't know, I just crashed. I stopped looking after myself. I, I, I think I would just, I think I lived off chocolate. <laughs> isn't a very good diet at all. Um, I did, I just, I lost myself. And it's taken me a, the best part of the summer to get help, to talk to a therapist, to talk to friends, to actually open up to friends. My closest friends didn't know how I was feeling because I would just paint a smile on my face and be like, hi, everything is fine. And inside I'm going, everything is not fine. But I actually, looking back, don't even think I realized I wasn't fine because I'm like, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. And my body was just like shutting down. It was like, stop, the stress was too much. I kept getting these migraines and yeah, it was, it was really hard. When I finally did open up to my family and some close friends and actually explained what was going on, it was a huge relief because I thought that if I said I was struggling, that I was failing. I thought that maybe I was failing as a mother, maybe I was failing as a sister, as a friend. So it was a really big step to say to them, actually, I'm not doing okay. I thought they were gonna say, oh, you'll be fine, it's just a phase. But instead, you know, they went, we can see that you're struggling. And that in itself was like, you can. It was really powerful. Um, so yeah, I am gonna dedicate uh, another episode on what I did because hopefully it might help someone else that needs it out there. But I will tell you one thing that I did, which was a game changer, is I swam on a waterfall. I went away with a friend to Wales and we found some waterfalls and we hiked up to this waterfall 
and I didn't have any swimming costume or anything with me, but I just had this urge to jump in. It was freezing. And I say I jumped in, I didn't, I actually fell in. <laughs> I went down to my underwear and I stood there with my feet on the rock going, oh, this is quite cold, I don't think I can get in. And I slipped, so I ended up in the waterfall. But, oh my gosh, it was incredible. And that for me was kind of like just shook my body out of what I was doing and how I was feeling and having a break away from the kids. It, that was hard because I felt guilty every time I left. But in actual fact, it's been good for the kids. You know, getting away from, from Dylan and Luca and Naya and having that little bit of a break and being like, well, mommy needs to look after herself now and I'm going away for a few days, but I love you and I'll be back and daddy's gonna look after you. It was really good for them to see that. And also it was so much so that, <laughs> that Dylan messaged me, because he messages me now, even if he's upstairs, he'll message me on my phone. And he says, mom, you know how sometimes you have to have a break away? He goes, I feel like I need a break away. And I said, okay, darling. I said, well, um, why don't we go to Auntie Sophie's house and uh, we can have a bit of a break away. He's like, yeah, I really need it. So Dylan and I went to my sister's house and we had the funniest evening and the best time. <laughs> So even for him to say, you know what, mom, I need a bit of a break from my sister or my brother and everyone needs a break. You guys need a break. We all need a break. And I know it's not always possible. It's not always easy. But even if you have a friend's house, you can go and sleep in. You don't need to go to a hotel, you don't need to spend any money, but there are people, support networks that can help you. So even if it's once a year you get away for one night, it is just so rejuvenating. And our children need us. Our children need us to be strong. And now I'm feeling stronger and I'm feeling better. And I'm also honest with the kids too. You know, I will tell Dylan, you know, mommy's not having a great day. I'm feeling a little bit down. And I think that helps him too, because everyone has a down day and we don't need to pretend. And so it's good for the kids. When they're having a bad day, they'll tell me. And then when we have a good day, we talk about what we're grateful for. So that's my side of things. The kids are doing so great. We're settled into our new house. We're gonna be doing a house tour coming up. I know I've been promising you for so long, but because of COVID and everything else, it's been delayed getting there. You can see my lovely kitchen behind us. And yeah, next episode, we're going to do a house tour. Dylan settled into his new secondary school. How are you feeling, Dylan? Hey, a little bit nervous. First day of your secondary school. Let's go. Let's go. I love you so much. Oh, I love you too. Luca is in year four over here and he has settled in great. I was really worried about him last year too because he'd left his friends in Brighton and his age, it was quite difficult, but he has settled in so great. Luca, you look so handsome. Naya has started school. What day is it today, Daddy? Day today, what day is it? It's school day. It's Naya Rose's first day of school. Naya, are you excited? Mm-hmm. Can you see your friends in there? <laughs> oh my gosh, if you've been following my journey from the beginning, you remember when we first started, she was only like tiny, like couldn't even speak. And now she doesn't stop talking. I don't know where she gets that from. And then I tied up her hair and make it pretty. They wanted it to be made. And then I made her pants all blue. They like blue color. She is great. She's dancing, singing, ruling the roost. And yeah, their bond is closer than ever. Dylan and Luca are super close. And I think that has been good during lockdown because it's been the three of them together. You've done so well, Dylan. It's been a really hard year for you, hasn't it? I do not. I wish uh, I wish 2020 would be a better year, but was it true? No, but 2021's a good year, isn't it? We all it? had a hard time. We all had a hard time. We did. And you've done so well, and I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. So what can you expect from this season of Coming Home to Autism? We have so much good content 
I hope, for you guys. We are gonna be interviewing some autistic adults. We're gonna be interviewing some other parents with children on the spectrum. We're gonna be um, showing you the house. We are gonna be talking about teenagehood, what's coming up, how I'm preparing Dylan for teenagehood. I'm also gonna be talking about um, having another baby. Oh, not me having another baby, by the way, but about having another baby after you've uh, just had a diagnosis of another child. That question comes up a lot. I'm also gonna do another episode on, I know I just spoke a little bit about it today, but about uh, dual diagnoses like the OCD, the PDA I mentioned, and the autism-related eating disorder. And we have an episode just with Dylan. I think he's actually trying to get me off my own channel. Since I've been really quiet on YouTube, he keeps saying to me, mom, we have to go back. We have to do the videos. We, our, our subscribers want to see me. I mean, he thinks you're all his fans. So he is doing his very own episode. So don't get used to it, Dylan. It's my channel. Huh? As always, I really appreciate you guys watching. Please do subscribe um, and leave a comment below. I will try and get back to as many of you as possible. I probably won't be posting every week because I really wanna make sure the videos I bring out are empowering, inspiring, and are well thought out and help you guys basically. So if you subscribe, you will get a notification when I upload, which might be every week, but realistically it's probably gonna be once every two weeks, but I will try my hardest. And I think Dylan also wants to do some little videos and try and post them for you guys as well. So please do subscribe, please do comment. And yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for supporting me, supporting my family. I love you guys and we'll see you next week.